Hey there, SolarLoon here, and this is a devlog of Gearin, my Metroid-like in development. Gearin is using the Java um, LibGDX based game engine, uh, BDX, it's a, th it's a 3D engine, integrated with Blender so that it's really easy to use. So as you can see, um, basically I have a few things going on here, let me see if I can work with myself here uh, and not mess this up <laughs> mess up this devlog um yeah so basically this is a metroid like um i've been working on it for just a couple of weeks so far and i meant to actually have another part to that second devlog it was just like um planning and stuff i actually had something done but i just decided I, i've kind of forgot to work on it <laughs> or, or to uh upload the part so i just decided to just uh make the part again because it wasn't acceptable for some reason. Okay, so um, this is the game. You move, you jump, you can shoot, you can attack. Um, that's right. In the last, um, or in the interval between last, the the last devlog and, and this one, I added a melee attack. So nothing's animated yet. Um, the shot is just one button to shoot, and the other button is melee. It shows up some of the time. Um, I'm not sure if you'll see it on the on the um, camera because it's just one frame so I guess if it's if the frame doesn't you know display or whatever then it doesn't look like it shows up but that's just basically a debug thing so that I can actually see that it is slashing um, these red blocks are destructible blocks you can't get through them um, they should stop bullets I haven't gotten bullets to stop on collision with solid objects but they can be destroyed by melee attacks so um, trying to remember if that's the way I want it or not but well we have to see yeah so that's good um, so everything's going pretty well it's shaping up you got movement you have jumping you have lots of good stuff um, that's right that's basically what I wanted to talk about is the jumping system the jumping system is basically based around Raycast because if you try to simply have the jumping system be based around any other method <laughs> it probably won't work unless you go with like a tile based method or something like that and you really want to shoehorn in like an old school method to deal with news um, with the same common problems of how do I detect if my player is on a you know, collided um, is on a solid block or not so let me show you a little bit of an example here um, this is I, I still don't really like how I have things kind of laid out with my code um, but it's just you know it's working so there's no real problem so far at least um, but basically this is a component called a ground ray that's why I called it and it's a custom component that I use for for my games and it's basically the the purpose of it is to basically cast a ray align the object to the ray if it's if that's what we want uh, move the object to the collision point you know kind of basic stuff like that um, so this is the method that I'm using to collide with the ground and you noticed or you'll notice here, I have two cubes. These are called um, ground cast point R and L, and they have a property, ground, ground cast point. What this does is basically allow us to use raycast on either side of, um, or rather from the position of each of these little cubes to cast array down to detect if the player is colliding with the ground. Um, and so this component, you know, basically it does everything by itself. All we need to do is just add in these cubes and give them this property and then the the game will kind of uh, the component will take it from there so to speak um, now the reason why we have those is because if you've ever noticed in games like Mario or platformers usually you can stand on the edge of a platform and still jump and still move and stuff like that without any issue um, for this to happen in a new school system a new school um, physics engine basically we need to use Raycast because we're using we're basically dealing with a, a much more modern and much more um, I guess you could say just different well real I don't know how to, how to call it simulated physics system so basically you notice I got rid of those um, ground cast points and now okay one thing I can't jump on on <laughs> destructible objects for some reason I couldn't I don't know why um, so I have to see about that but the the real reason why I want to show this if you notice once I kind of I'm not on like the direct center of a block I can't jump I can't jump anymore I can only jump once I'm actually standing on like a real solid center of a block this is a problem because if you notice let me restart oops if you notice um, once you're standing just just a tad off 
to the to the side, it doesn't really work. Um, you know, obviously you can't detect if the ground is under him if he's not directly on the ground. So it's kind of a problem. So we use multiple raycasts because that way you can basically tell if he's on an edge of a platform, if he's to the you know left of a of a piece of ground or to the right of a piece of ground, but still in contact with it. Now you might be saying, well, why why even use raycasts at all? Why not just use something else? Well. Basically, no other method of collision detection would allow you to get the point at which the collision is happening. That's important because we want the character to kind of snap and to um, really be tactile when it comes to jumping. You, you don't want to have a situation where it's like, I press jump and the game didn't detect it because, you know, he he jolted a little bit in the air because of a problem, a little bit of a discrepancy in the in the ground or because you know, whatever, because his timing was just off, or the physics system decided to give him a little extra push from a jump. From falling, he gets a little bit of a, uh, of a upward, you know, momentum, and then he can't jump. And it's like, well, I, he needed to be on the ground right then. So we don't want that kind of a, a thing. We want it to be where it's like he was falling, and boom, he hits the ground, he's locked into the ground, he's solid, collided with the ground, everything's good. Um, if you use, for example, a, a piece of, a piece of cube, <laughs> if you use a a cube to te uh, detect a collision, for example, uh, between an object and another object. It, it can detect a collision, but it can't basically tell where the collision will be. Like you can stretch the the cube in anticipation that you'll basically be falling down, but you can't tell like where w was the collision if you have a, a ground you know detection point. Uh, ground detection cube. You can't tell like, oh, it was it collided right here, right, you know, right in this point, and then move him to move the the player to come into contact with that. So that's why I use raycast basically, so we can tell where this collision collision point is and hit it square, right, easy peasy. Um, the kind of other little pieces, little bits and and bobs, so to speak. Uh, this is the part layer where basically I have each part. Uh, for the game where you'll in, in the game you'll be able to equip different parts to your character in this um, Layer I have each part set up as a separate sprite and a separate plane And this is done so that I can actually position things as I want for example this hitbox for this weapon will be Shaped like this and be positioned here as opposed to another weapon that might be um, more of a uh, circular hitbox and perhaps position differently same thing with the guns the the point where their bullet comes out can I can position it it's blurry only in blender of course but you can I can position the point where the bullet comes out specifically here as opposed to a much larger gun where it might be over here or it might you know be over or wherever you know where whatever the case is so I thought that that might be a good idea to to do um, yeah, so it's little things here and there, nothing really outstanding or amazing yet. I'm just kind of getting things running. Um, this is an NPC. Uh, I haven't gotten him to work yet, but that's going to be upcoming soon. In fact, that's what the next devlog is going to be about. Uh, I'm going to basically live code uh, detection of an NPC into Gearend. Uh, you probably saw when I started the game earlier, I, it showed like the GUI, I'm sorry, the uh, message box. I have that working where you can basically say, please display this on screen and it'll go ahead and type out the, the message that you want it to, to say. Um, but there's no way to actually like get a, that message from an NPC or anything like that. So that's what we will be doing uh, next time. All right, so yeah, thank you very much for watching. I've been Solar Loon and this has been uh, a gear and development log. Thanks, see ya.